Right, so we're going to apply some door stencils to the door. Now, the single most important thing to do first is to clean everything with panel degreaser. The second thing is get your stencil and work out where the centre of it is. Now, you can do that by just measuring the top of wherever your stencil is. So the highest point there, so it's roughly there. End is like the ending, so roughly there. So we roughly worked out the centre point. And then you want to work out your centre point of your door. So obviously this door is a weird shape. It goes out there and in there. So I've took the widest points, which is kind of conveniently along this line. And I've worked that out, split, whatever that measurement is, halved it, which gives me that as my centre line. So I know roughly that's the centre of the door. So we've got it here. So that's about central of the door. And then the reason being of these two marks is because if you have a, a solid point like here, you can measure straight down and then you want to make sure that the same measurement in an ideal world is the back here however as i've noticed when i've done the other side of the car the door's slightly different it's not completely flat with the bottom so what i'm going to do is get it roughly about right i'm going to roughly measure it and then we may just have to just do a tiny little adjustment on there but the easiest kind of way to do it is to sort of roughly stick it where it needs to be stand back from the car have a look whether that looks about right by eye it doesn't need to be 100 percent exact same with the one on the other side because you can't look at both sides at once so if they're slightly different heights as long as that massively out you're not going to notice it so once you're happy with the placement which i'm going to work that out in a minute and um, you want to make sure that the sticker is stuck to the release paper which is the top bit so you want to go over the whole sticker with an old card credit card or something similar unless you've got a proper one of these squeegees and just make sure it's fully stuck the reason being is because when you start peeling the vinyl off the back bits may not stick to the release paper so you've got to be careful for that when you're doing it however like we're gonna now line it up put it on i'm going to just show you a kind of a time lapse of me doing it we sell stencils we don't do our logo as a stencil because obviously it's a registered trademark um, but we do do kind of a funny ones different kind of door stencils and stuff so we're going to apply this on and we're going to show you the next stage. Right, so what you might have seen as I was doing it was a small kind of minor detail. A small bit of the sensor that has come away on this, which is not really going to matter too much. However, if when you're doing it, kind of a bigger bit starts coming away, you stop, go back a little bit, and you can use like a standing knife blade or something to put it back onto this release paper before then carrying on and removing it. And the only reason it does that is if you haven't kind of rubbed it hard enough before taking this off. So it happens to me, um, so it's likely to happen to other people as well. The other thing is, don't worry too much, if it's only a small detail, then it's not really going to matter when you come to patina it, because you're going to be sanding it anyway, so you're going to lose quite a lot of these kind of high-end, well, high-definition uh, details, so don't worry too much. The other thing to note as well is there's bubbles in it. That I've done as I've doing it again that's fine it's basically because I'm trying to put on the sticker as flat as possible where there's going to be paint these kind of stickers these kind of bubbles and stuff don't worry too much about just try and keep them away at all costs really from your main kind of bits where the paint's going so once you're at this stage it's just a case of peeling the release paper off now and again that may lift the vinyl so kind of just pull it nice and flat as you can see 
it might take a couple of details off but again we're doing a patina stencil so it's not too bad some of the more detail uh, sorry some of the less detailed stencils are usually better like the ones we sell on the website because you're doing big blocks of color rather than real kind of concentrated details like we've got on our logo and i wish before we started rusty paint that we realized we we're going to be doing stuff like this because i wonder if this is the logo would have made it a lot easier to work with as you can see i've just pulled a massive bit off so i can kind of push it back it's probably a good uh, good way to show you really push it back and apply it back to the door there we go now again, it doesn't need to be exact. It might not be in exactly the right place, but we're going to be painting it and then sanding the paint anyway. So we're going to lose a lot of the detail with our particular logo. So if you spray in, you're going to want to mask further out. So you can use an aerosol can if you want. Just obviously add kind of more and more stuff backwards to kind of give you a protection from any overspray. We're rolling. So I don't really need to, but it's just good to show you. And that's pretty much one of our vinyl stencils ready to go. Like I say, if you have a look on our website, we've got some cool ones. We don't do this exact one, but we do a lot of different kind of door stencils. They're ready to go. Right, so we're gonna be painting just an orange color as our door stencils. Normally we'd put a rusty paint as a very small base underneath if you want rust to come through your stencil and then a colour over the top. You can use aerosol cans over the top of rusty paint. You can use emulsion paints. Um, pretty much every paint we've tried goes over the top with no issues. So most people will use like a rattle can of spray now. Um, we're going to use this orange paint that we're mixing. So this is just going to go over the top however what you need to do with whatever type of paint you're applying you need to do it very thinly because the last thing you want is anything bleeding underneath this vinyl stencil and you also don't want any kind of solvent based paints to cause any issues with uh, the stencil so you don't know how harsh your paint is and also it makes it easier for removing the stencil so get your paint mixed which is what we've got here and it needs to be applied as thinly as possible ideally two coats as well Right, so the paint's drawn the door, uh, ready for different options now really. The first one, which is what we're going to do, is remove the stencil and we're going to kind of see how it looks, whether we're going to weather it into the door or not. I'm not sure at this stage, I'm hoping not to. And for us to remove it, we're going to use one of these two tools, which is a Stanley knife to pick out all the kind of small bits we can't get to, or if you've got one of these to hand, which is loads better, they're... Uh, like a dentistry toothpick but a lot of us people will use them for weeding kind of uh, stencils and stickers so we've got one to hand which is loads easier and they're just used for picking the bits out that won't come off of the stencil because obviously pulling the stencil off now will just pull out the old line and there's loads of bits inside the actual paint area that needs removing uh, so now you can obviously do that which is the way we're going your other option at the minute is to put another colour on the top if you wanted to fade another colour in or spray another colour on top, which is fine. Or another thing that we found is quite handy is having, if you put a stencil onto some shiny bodywork and you don't want to damage bodywork with sanding but you want to weather the stencil, is to leave the stencil on and sand with the stencil on. Now there's pros and cons to this. The pro is obviously you're not going to damage the paint as long as you're careful you're not going to damage the paint underneath the vinyl, where the vinyl is. The con to that is you are going to potentially heat up the vinyl and it will leave some residue and 
uh, glue on the vehicle bodywork when you move off and obviously that will need then taking off but we're going to just take it off now as it is i'm going to do a close-up of the process and show you how it's done Right, so we're at the stage of stencils being removed fully. There's no kind of stickiness left uh, residue. So we're probably not going to sand this. However, you could weather it if you wanted to now by using a bit of 320 sandpaper and just sanding. I'm going to leave it because I want it as noticeable as possible, obviously. The other thing you can do now, you've got an outline and some of the stencils that we sell on the website need obviously more than one colour so you could obviously colour in like bits of the tyres maybe add a body colour to it a silver grill that sort of stuff because if you can hear obviously the paint's stuck out so it's like a bit of like painting by numbers you could add some paint in there if you wanted to before weathering it however i just want literally just the one colour so i'm going to leave this now and we get on to the stage of cleaning the car and then activating that is how you do the stencils.